Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at an introduction to waves which is part of the waves topic for GCSE Combined Science Physics. So in today's lesson what we're going to do is we're going to look at the different properties of waves and look and try and define what a wave is. So if we're successful and we've learned in today's lesson we can define what a wave is, understand and describe a longitudinal and a transverse wave and deduce the different properties of waves. So this comes to fall into the following part of the AQA GCSE Combined Science Specification 6.6.11 Transverse and Longitudinal Waves 6.6.12 properties of waves. Now wave behavior is common in both natural and man-made systems. Now waves can carry energy from one place to another and can also carry information and the following diagram is an approximation of how waves look in this process. Now you can use waves in many different real world applications such as your mobile phone or listen to the radio or you can use it to design comfortable and safe structures such as bridges, houses and music performance halls. Now modern tech Technology, such as imaging and communication systems show how we can make the use of a special type of wave called electromagnetic waves. So we consider one wave to be one repeating pattern of this particular process. So what do we mean by a wave and what are the different types of waves? Now a wave is a mechanism that transfers energy and or information from one place in the universe to another place in the universe without the net movement of matter. So what is happening is the energy is transferring through the universe but the particles the matter is only vibrating or oscillating it's not actually traveling so the particles will vibrate backwards and forwards in a wave but there's no net movement of the particles so when the waves in the particle oscillate they transfer energy between each other and allow the energy to be transferred so in a wave energy is being transferred but matter is not and we can see this in many examples so so when a twig is dropped into a calm pool of water, ripples form on a water surface, but the ripple doesn't carry the twig or water away with them, indicating it's the energy that's traveling through. If you strum a guitar string and create sound waves, the sound waves do not carry the air away from the guitar and create a vacuum, so you can still hear the guitar. Now, Waves will cause particles to move backwards and forwards or oscillate as the energy transfers through, as shown in the following animation. The particles will oscillate backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. This is called an oscillation or a vibration. So a wave will cause a particle to oscillate or to vibrate. Now one complete oscillation or wave is when the particles move one way, then the other way and go back to where they start. So this cycle is one complete oscillation or a wave. Now, what happens is, as we just mentioned before, it's the energy being transferred, not the particles themselves. Now, the correct name we use in science for energy transfer is called propagation. So, the wave is a pathway for energy to propagate or to move in the universe and can cause energies to change store. So, in a system, which is a number of connected objects, energy can change store without the need for a wave, and we call that work. So, when energy stores change without a wave we say work is being done it's mechanical work now in a system there are actually four ways to change the energy stores of objects either work done by a force work done by an electrical current or the two ways that waves can transfer energy either heating or radiation so to clarify a wave is a mechanism that can transfer energy from one place to another place without the net movement of particles in a wave the particles will oscillate about a position but they will not move overall. Now we can classify waves into one of two categories. It'll either be mechanical or electromagnetic and it'll either be transverse or longitudinal. Now just to remember, the oscillation of a wave represents the energy found in the wave. The greater the energy in the wave, the larger the oscillation. Now there are two different materials which can be oscillated by a wave, which gives us the two categories, electromagnetic waves and mechanical waves. So a mechanical wave is is a wave which has oscillations of matter or particles e.g. atoms now once again there's no net there's no net displacement of the particles the particles will move back and forth about a fixed position now 
This means mechanical waves need particles for energy to be transferred. So mechanical waves cannot travel in a vacuum. Now, just remember again, whilst the particles are oscillating backwards and forwards, there's no net displacement of the particles, so we state there's no overall movement. So for example, in a sound wave, particles do not travel from the object making the sound to the object detecting the sound. The sound wave is a series of particle vibrations causing the particles to vibrate backwards and forwards forwards and they collide with the next particle and make the particle vibrate passing the energy on. Now because mechanical waves need particles to be transferred, mechanical waves cannot travel over the vacuum of space because there are no particles in the at space. Now an electromagnetic wave is a wave which has oscillations of the electromagnetic field or the electric magnetic field lines. Now this means electromagnetic waves do not need particles to travel, they only need electrical and magnetic fields which go through the entire universe they can travel anywhere even a vacuum so electromagnetic waves can travel over the vacuum of space because they don't need particles it's a vibration of the electric and magnetic fields which are present everywhere in the universe now electromagnetic waves in a vacuum can travel the fastest possible speed in the universe that speed is three times ten to the eight meters per second nothing can travel faster than this speed now Electromagnetic waves travel fastest in a vacuum as there's no particles present to slow the waves down. So to clarify, electromagnetic waves are oscillations of the electromagnetic field and so they can travel through a vacuum. All electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed, the fastest speed in the universe in a vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, which some people commonly call the speed of light. Examples of this include visible light waves, infrared waves, gamma rays and radio waves waves. A mechanical wave is an oscillation of particles. They cannot travel through a vacuum. Now mechanical waves travel at different speeds depending on the material they're traveling in. Examples of this will include sound waves, water waves, waves on a string and seismic waves or earthquake waves. Now there's another category we can place a wave in. It can either be transverse or longitudinal because another property we can measure is the direction in which the particles will oscillate when the wave travels through. Now, a transverse wave is when the oscillations or vibrations of the particle are perpendicular at 90 degrees to the direction in which the energy is transferred, the energy is propagated. So in a wave, the particles, once again, remember, do not move position, they only oscillate backwards and forwards, which is very important. Now, an example of a transverse wave is a water wave ripple. Now, a longitudinal wave is a wave where the oscillations of the particles are parallel to the direction in which the wave transfers energy or propagates energy. So once again, remember the particles are not moving position, they're only oscillating. And an example, which we'll look at in a second, will be a sound wave. So transverse waves are when the, are oscillations are perpendicular to the direction which the wave propagates energy. If we assume the energy propagates from left to right, the waves could oscillate up and down. Now, all electromagnetic waves are transverse, whilst longitudinal waves, they are waves which have oscillations which are parallel to the direction in which the wave transfers energy. If we assume the energy propagates from left to right, the wave would oscillate from left to right. And examples include sound waves, primary seismic waves, and water water waves. Now the final thing we can do when describing a wave is describe the properties or terms used to make up a wave. So here is a diagram of a transverse wave. Now once again in a wave you've got your particles oscillate in one direction and then the other direction. Now the first property of a wave you've got to be aware of is the amplitude which is measured in meters. That's the amplitude of a wave is the maximum possible displacement of the particles from the equilibrium position, the undisturbed position at the center of the diagram. So as shown in this following image. Now the equilibrium position is also known as the rest position of the particles. The wavelength is measured in meters as well, and the wavelength of a wave is the length of one whole cycle. It can be measured as the distance between two peaks of a wave, two troughs of a wave, or the same position from one wave to the next wave. It's the distance traveled before the wave 
wave repeats itself. Now the time period measured in seconds is the time it takes for one complete wave to occur. Like wavelength, it can be measured the time it takes between two peaks, two troughs or two similar points on adjacent waves. Again, it's the time taken before the wave repeats itself. Now frequency is measured in hertz, it's the number of complete oscillations produced by a wave or a wa of complete, number of complete waves passing a point every second. Now it's closely linked to the time period of the wave because frequency is equal to 1 over time period and time period is equal to 1 over frequency. So let's just recap what those different terms mean again. The amplitude of a wave is the maximum displacement of the particles from equilibrium position, the wavelength is the wavelength of a wave being the length of one whole cycle. It can be measured between two adjacent peaks, two troughs, or any point on a wave and the same point on one wave later. The time period is the time it takes for one complete wave to happen. Like wavelength, it can be measured as the time it takes between two adjacent peaks, two adjacent troughs, or to get back to the same point on the wave. Now, frequency is one of the most measurable properties of a wave and is linked to the time period and wavelength of a wave. It's how many waves are produced or pass a point every single second. So it's the number of waves which will, or will pass a certain point or are produced by a source each second. The unit of frequency is hertz. Hertz. 1 hertz is 1 wave produced or passing a point every second, so 20 hertz is 20 waves being produced every second. Now the frequency can be worked out with the equation frequency is equal to 1 over time period. Now this equation is given to you in your exam, so you need to be able to use it but not recall it. So an example question would be, a wave has a time period of 4.0 seconds, what is the frequency? So you write out the equation, frequency is 1 over time period, you substitute the values in, frequency is 1 over 4.0, you calculate your answer and place a unit on there, frequency is 0.25 hertz. So always put your units on and check that you've got the correct number of significant figures. So let's just summarise what we've learnt in today's lesson. Waves may be either transverse or longitudinal. The ripples on a water wave are an example of a transverse wave. A longitudinal wave will show areas of compression and rarefaction. Sound waves travel through air being are longitudinal, and you should describe the difference between longitudinal and transverse waves, and describe evidence for both ripples on a water wave and sound waves in air that it's a wave that's being transferred and not the water or air itself. And you should be able to describe wave motion in terms of amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and period. Amplitude being the maximum displacement of a point on a wave, away from its undisturbed position. The wavelength of a wave is the distance from a point on one wave to the equivalent point on the adjacent wave. And the frequency of a wave is the number of waves passing a point each second, where frequency is equal to 1 over time period, or time period is equal to 1 over frequency. Now, if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can define what a wave is, understand and describe a longitudinal and transverse wave, and deduce the different properties of a wave. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson, looking at an introduction to waves in the waves topic of GCSE Combined Science. Thank you and have a lovely day.